So, I'm going to start with a picture. This is one of my patients, Sid Gersman, and his wife, Anne. I met Sid uh, just a couple months after I came here from Chicago. Uh, he was brought to St. Michael's with a massive brain hemorrhage. And I'll tell you, as a doctor here, uh, an American doctor here, this is a remarkable hospital. Uh, if they get you here in time with a brain hemorrhage, there is a very good chance that we're going to get you home. And that was the case for Sid. Uh, our team got him emergently to the operating room. He went through surgery, and he walked out of hospital. What I found in surgery, though, was something that just didn't look right. And I sent it to the pathologist. And what they told me was that the hemorrhage he had in his brain was because he had bled into a malignant brain tumor. Sid died about 15 months later, uh, despite my surgery, despite chemotherapy, despite radiation therapy. And that's pretty typical for this type of malignant cancer. It's called a glioblastoma. You come in with a hemorrhage to St. Mike's, we're going to get you home. You come in with a malignant brain tumor, and despite the best that I do, it's going to take your life. And that's why I'm going to tell you about what we have to show you now. So this is lambda dark matter. Uh, we can't actually see dark matter. This is a pictorial representation. It's what is thought to be left over from the Big Bang. And it's thought to hold all the answers. What physicists think is, is that if we could figure out what's here, it will make sense of it all for us. So why is this important for us? So my group with Phil's group studies genetic dark matter. So Francis and Crick, when they figured out what DNA was, gave us the central dogma of biology, which is that DNA gives rise to RNA, gives rise to protein. When we cloned the human genome, we found out that only 3% of the genome actually makes protein. The rest was dark matter. And we know what that is now. It's RNA that controls the rest of the cell. Phil and I have found one that makes tumor cells in these brain tumors into blood vessels. And when we target it, this is what happens. These are tumors in a mouse, and you can see why it is we're excited. I want to take this to my patients. We're years away from that, but this is the point of science, to do what I can't do as a surgeon. And if this can work in my patients the way it does here, uh, then I will actually have something real to offer. Thank you. Thank you.